Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna be working on my 1976 Ford F100. And we're gonna be upgrading the stereo system in it, upgrading to a uh, retro sound radio, as well as retro sound uh, rear box speakers to go behind the seat. So let's jump into it, take a look at what we got and uh, get it installed, I'm excited about this. All right, so here's the box that we got. Let's open it up and take a look, see what we got here. So in the box, you get the the radio, you get the faceplate, and you get the also the other faceplate and knobs and hardware. And for this, you actually have to put this together. Then we have the unit itself. It looks like a really well built unit, very nice. This side down, they even got it labeled for you to see. You know, retro sound there that goes facing up, and then it says right there this side down. So that makes it easy to know which way it goes. These wires in here you can pull out to hook the faceplate to it. All kinds of adapters and all for amps, which I don't need in my application. I'm not going to worry about any of this. That's for a, uh, an auxiliary port if you want to plug your phone into an aux cord. You got amp locations. Uh, they actually got a couple auxiliary ports, which is cool. You got a USB port, which is nice. And then, of course, your antenna. I'm probably going to take all this and just like tape it up out of the way because I'm not going to use that. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't going to do no amp. Then of course all your wires and, and hardware and all. It's nice to put an inline fuse with it. Uh, this side like here is for speaker side and this is for the power. And then you got your microphone if you want to. I probably won't hook my microphone up because I just don't care about that kind of stuff. I, you know, I'm not gonna use it. Hardware, screws, any kind of stuff you may need, washers. Some uh, caps to go behind the knobs, I believe, if you so desire to do that. And then of course your brackets for your radio knobs. This box here, we got the face plate. No, this is the radio knobs here and then again some washers and the nuts to hook it up instructions face plate with the buttons very nice unit okay so here's the face plate um i ordered the black one i wanted the all black face because i wanted to look as original as possible and too much chrome to me is kind of gaudy so by doing this it gives me more of that original look cause the original radio is all black faced with the black push buttons and all that, so it's good. For some reason or another, to get the knobs like I wanted to match my original style to where they are fully chrome, and I'll show you later, you can get where it has black inserts or chrome inserts, and I wanted the chrome to match the original. For some reason, you couldn't get a black face frame to go with, I don't know why. So what I'm thinking about doing is, see this slides over like that, and I have, this is the bezel out of my truck, the original bezel. And to me, that looks just like it's too much. It's too much chrome because you got to figure this one's worn off, but around here is, is chrome. And it's just too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something. Since I got to paint this anyway, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to keep this one ridge here chrome. Paint the rest of it black and see how that looks. If I don't like it, I can always come back and paint that black too. Okay, so while we're waiting for that face plate to dry, we can go ahead and hook our, our face plate up, the, our, our face that goes on here. And all it does is it plugs in, just like so, and then we're gonna put it over here, and we got some screws where I get our hardware out and, and screw it together. It'll only plug in one way. This tab goes in line with that tab, so you can't put it in wrong. I'm just gonna plug that in, like so. And then you can tuck your wires back up in here, like it was. And then just it slides into these little grooves. It's got like a metal bracket. Slides in just like that. Pop our screws in there. Finally found the screws for this face plate. These, these four little screws here, they were in this orange bag hidden inside this bag. So I'm sitting here counting all these screws and all thinking that they cheated me, but yeah. There they are, a little teeny tiny screw there. So. After you got your face plate installed, then 14 tiny screws go in these holes right here. When it comes to these brackets, they are directional. I don't know how you can see it here, but there is an R stamp in here and an L stamp in here for left and right. When you're installing these, like for instance, this is the left side here. So when you're installing it, it would go like this onto the radio, you just line your four holes up. And the good thing is about this, you can adjust it front to back, 
up and down. So that's good. We're also gonna use these screws here to mount them on. There should be, you need a total of two, four, six, eight, eight screws, and then it'll leave you a total of two left over. So once you got these L brackets installed, you have to figure out the right spot for yours and how far forward, up, down, you know, whatever the case may be in your application. Luckily, a buddy of mine, uh, a lifelong friend of mine, he just put one of these in his 77 Ford truck. It's gonna be the same application for my 1976 Ford truck. And he says, by the way, if you ain't heard of him, go check him out. He's at, his uh, YouTube channel is Six Speed Media. He's got a Corvette and that 77 Ford truck he's working on. But anyway, what he says that he figured out what works is to slide this all the way forward as far as it'll go. And then your knob, take it and put it in as far as it'll go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these set up and tighten everything down and then we'll put it in the bezel and see how close it is to fit. Quick tip, you can see how it's slotted out at the back here. A good tip is you can go ahead and put these two back screws in, leave the front two out and it makes it easier and then you can slide the bracket on and then put your two front screws in and then tighten everything down. So. Okay, so what I ended up doing was instead of having that piece of chrome, I just went in and painted the whole thing black. I didn't really like the way it looked chrome. I didn't feel like messing with it. So I was just like, you know, I'm just going to paint it black, make it look more like the original. So I took care of that, got that put on. Now, the way that I did this, as you can see here, like I was saying, put your knobs as far forward as they'll go, put your brackets as far forward as they'll go. And how you want to set up the distance on your knobs is get your faceplate and put it in here. And you want to even it up. So you want to kind of like center your faceplate over the radio and your knobs and all and get it set right. Now, if you have an aftermarket uh, bezel, because this is the original bezel to my truck. But I have an aftermarket in the truck because this one here is all dull. So I replaced it with a nice new one with a chrome on it. The new ones do not come with this separate. They all come put together like this. So you can still take your bezel and sit over the radio it's just a little bit more awkward because you're having to deal with this whole piece instead of just the one face plate but you can still use the bezel and use it to kind of center your knobs and set everything up and that makes it easier to install when you're actually good at put it in the truck okay and to go behind the seat of my truck we have this as well and this is their speaker boxes meant to go behind the seat of trucks you can see how it's made at an angle to fit the contour of the seat it's a nice unit. It's got a carpet on it. Uh, and I believe in here is, he asked for the speaker tone to come out and then you got a tweeter up here. So you had a real nice unit and then you hook the wires in from the side here is by pushing in like that, hook your wires into it. So that's a nice setup, I like that. Okay, now if we get looking, this is one reason why I'm wanting to do this radio install on this truck. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time on this truck and just kept putting it off, kept putting it off, other things will come up, you know how it is. But it's real messy back here. I got this ATV Bluetooth speaker, which works pretty good for what it is, but it still is just not, you know, yeah, I want to get rid of all this mess back here. I got that blankets back here. I put back here to help keep that from sliding back and forth along with this other crap I got down here to keep that centered, you know. But uh, we're gonna upgrade all this, clean this up back here, and make it look good. All right, so I went in and got my speaker wires run, or ready to run from underneath the seat to go back to the back speakers. I did it like this to make kind of like a, my own little wiring harness to keep everything nice and neat and tight. This is way too much wire for what I'm gonna need, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of extra in case I want to you know, change the way I route it or whatever, so. And also what I did is I labeled these for left and right that way whenever i go to install it i won't have to guess which wire is which you said i did the same thing at the other end too so when i get ready to hook it to the speaker i'll know which one is left and right so just to make it easier all right so what i did here is i took a piece of welding wire and wrapped tape around it so i could push it underneath my carpet without poking through the carpet now that we're gonna we're gonna use this rod here now to pull these wires underneath the carpet to get them up front to where they need to be so to do that, we're gonna take this tape off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tape these wires to it really good. So then we we'll have to worry about it coming loose. And tape the wires to the welding rod really good and tight. 
so that it don't come loose. And now it's nice and tight, it shouldn't come loose. Like so. Now we can go to the front and pull our welding wire and pull the speaker wire is right underneath the carpet. Make sure you keep feeding it as you go so you don't pull it loose. All right, you see once you got it ran through, you got your speaker wire out in the front of your carpet. Now we can take this wire off and go ahead and lay our carpet back down to kind of get the wires sort of in place of where we want them. Okay, now we got all this cleared out, cleaned up, I wiped all this down, vacuumed it out, wiped it down, so now we can put the speaker boxes in. And there we go. You put them in as far in as you want to. It's really up to a uh, user, you know, how you want to do it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep that kind of like it being, like there's this cutout in the floor or this indention that would almost work perfect for how far over to do it. You know, that would work if you want to do it that way. But I'm probably just going to keep mine right about here. Because I, I kind of like that. It's a little bit more centered, I believe, with it. And, uh, it kind of helps you just, I put mine even with this piece that sticks out to match that side because I got my fire extinguisher over there so I can't put it over any further anyway. But, and now we can run our speaker wire and hook that up. And, uh, yeah, good to go. Okay, here's the final look. I got everything installed. Uh, I ran the speaker wire underneath the carpet here. Come up the sides like this. And just rolled it back in here and hooked into the uh, speaker right there. All right, so we're going to take this dash apart here. We need to get this instrument cluster out so we can get the radio out to put the new radio in. So if you have your original radio, if you got aftermarket, you got to take it out however means necessary. I still got the original, so the knob just pulls straight off. And you got two 9 16th nuts here pull them off and there's also screws you should have one two three four and also five over here by the windshield washer or windshield wiper and headlight switch okay also another thing is you gotta get these two knobs here off my windshield washer knob just comes right off luckily but if not if yours don't you got that little clip right there and ordinarily you'd have to put see how it's notched out right there that clip's actually supposed to be back in there further than mine is and you would put your little pick tool in there push back on that clip and then just pull it straight off when it comes to the headlight switch you've actually got to go up underneath the dash and there's a button on top to pull this knob out i'll show you that after i get it disassembled to show you how it actually works all right so once you got everything taken loose this right here will simply just kind of slide forward Come off like so if you have factory air conditioning like i do then you got to take your duct loose on the pet on the driver's side here all right so from here I'll show you the best i can here all right so if you look here this right here is that plug or that button i was telling you about when you're pulling your headlight switch out you can you pull your headlight switch out and you push that button in and hold it in and then pull the, the switch the knob all the way out and then you can take your knob because your headlights will be on when you do that you can take this and push in there and you'll feel it click twice just like you would ordinarily when you're turning your headlights on and off and then you can pull it back out and it's out of the way and that's all there is to that now we got to go through and remove these screws uh you probably don't have to remove your instrument cluster to do the radio but i'm going to just give me some extra room so i'm gonna go through and remove all my screws to pull this out and then I get over here to remove this. Okay, another thing you're going to have to do when you install these radios is install your, or set your depth for your bracket for the face frame. Because it's going to go through these holes here, so you got to set your depth. So what I did is, since I have my original radio, if you don't have an original radio, you're going to have to just kind of mess with yours and guess. But I can tell you where roughly you need to be, because I measured my radio 
here. I came off the, the nut here to the face frame and just measured it like this. And I got about a quarter of an inch on both sides. So then I just come up here and did the same thing. Since I know the bezel itself rests on this, this is to the face, the flat part here. I just come up here after I get my washer and all installed, measure from the washer to right here. So you got about a quarter of an inch to that face frame. So I did that on both sides and then it should be set, should be good to go. So another thing, if you noticed, I put two jam nuts on here. Uh, if you don't have your original mounting hardware for your original radio, the studs here, because these threads and these threads are the same. So I'm gonna use my original nuts because originally the truck came with four. You have two to mount this to the bracket, then two to mount the face plate to the radio. So I have four, I'm gonna use my four original ones to actually mount it in the truck. Uh, this is all the nuts they give you. They only give you, uh, what, three? They only give you six nuts in the kit. So if you don't have this, you're not going to be able to do a jam nut unless you get some. I did this to set my depth so it won't move. That way, when I'm finagling in the truck and setting it in the dash, I don't have to worry about these backing off, having to go in there and readjust them and, and all that crap. I could just put them on here, leave it, lock them down. They won't move. And now I can set it in the truck. It's good to go. All right, so when I installed the radio, you can see that uh it's pretty tight in there what i did for the power wire is and the speaker wires are labeled on the unit itself for which is left and right and all that and front and back but uh i used the original power wire to the original radio it's a green plug i just tapped into that with a spade connector took for the power wire i ran a ground across here into the factory harness loops and grounded it right here to the frame and then i ran it across and there's a plug right here and it's a plug it's you see you got that black wire with the blue stripe then i got my red wire with that connector that i tapped into for the uh memory wire it's constant 12 volts so i just tapped into that and that's all there is to it and once you get that done you can just put it back together okay and real quick just to show you the example what i was talking about i uh, hooked into my factory power wire it'll be if Unless yours has been cut off in the past by previous owners, uh, you'll have a plug like this. It's a green plug. The blue and red wire you won't use anymore for the retro sound because that's your light wire for when you turn the dash lights on. This is the power wire. Even though it's black, that's what they use. That's the power wire. So you can see how... And here you got the male terminals in here. Well, in the truck, it'd be a female terminal. So I just put a spade connector on the wire and plugged it in to the factory plug. So simple as that, easy peasy. And then uh, you're good to go. Also, one more thing I forgot to mention. That bracket that bolts to the radio, you may have to bend it a little bit to clear this bezel. Mine was close to clearing, but I had to bend it just a little bit to, to keep that away. All right, and there is a finished look at the radio installed. Now, I actually did end up using my original radio knobs. And how you do it on a retro sound is, because the way these knobs are made, they got this split in it. The original knob has a metal insert and see it's cut kind of like a D in there. What you have to do is remove that metal insert. Then you can come in here and where it's split, you would think you would put the flat part of the the D shape of the knob on the flat part here, but you don't cause if you do that, it'll just spin around. It will not sit properly on there. As you can see, it's real loose. So what you do is you take the D part where it's flat inside the knob and put it on the rounded side. And I guess what it kind of does is kind of like make this act as a spring kind of where it squeezes it a little bit and it makes a real tight fit. And that's all I did. And put it in line there and it's a nice snug fit and you still push your buttons and all that like you're supposed to do that for both sides you get to keep your original knobs and it looks good now i did use the new back knobs because you can't use i mean you probably could i didn't even try but i used the uh the new ones that came in the kit for them because they look the same but yeah that's all there is to it all right so we got everything installed. I'm not gonna play any music because I don't want a copyright strike, but I'll show you how the radio looks when it's turned on. 
So you get retro sound to pull up. And then of course, you know, whatever music you would play or uh, hook to it, you can connect your Bluetooth to it. And what I like about this is that your phone automatically connects. So when you first install this, all you have to do is just go to Bluetooth on your retro sound radio, go to your phone settings, and then it'll automatically connect. So I think that's real nice. You don't need no code or nothing like that. That's really cool. It's got a lot of features. You can change the color and all that. And here you have to go through and play with it. Uh, it, it took me a little bit of time to figure everything out on it, but it's pretty simple, really, once you play with it a little bit. Change the color. You can change uh, if you want the title or the time or whatever up front. And so that's really cool. Anyway, but there you go. That's... Uh, and install look i would like to play some music for y'all but i don't want a copyright strike and i don't have any what you would call i guess proper non-copyrighted music to play but it sounds really good the system sounds really good the speakers sound really good it got a nice bass to it nice treble all that it sound really good uh to go through this radio you hit this button here and this will take you to all your your settings for like your bass middle treble all that you set all that up on here and uh yeah, but real easy to set up, no big deal. And then, uh, yeah, you got, I think, two FMs and AM. You got uh, Bluetooth, obviously. And it did come with a, a, uh, a cord to plug USB into also that I got tucked up behind the dash. I didn't use the microphone because I just don't want to. But uh, I know some people, they'll run the cord up here like this, actually, my buddy did. 6 speed media he ran his up here and clipped it onto his visor which works uh the one in my 77 the guy i bought that truck from he hooked it right here which is a pretty good spot too yeah there we go and that is a done deal all righty guys well that's it we finally got done with that and uh, it turned out really well i'm happy with the way it turned out and I uh, couldn't be happier. Like I said, I'm, I'm glad I spent the money on it and finally got this done. It's, I've been looking forward to on this truck since I bought it and uh, just kept putting it off, putting it off. Uh, I got I got between five to $600 in the system between buying the stereo and the speakers and speaker wire, you know. Um, but it's a good system. It'll last a long time, and it sounds really good, so I'm happy with it. And uh, I, I think it was worth it in the long run, so... It might be a lot of money now, but it'll pay for itself in the long run. It's already paid for itself, in my opinion, because I got to enjoy it. So it's all about what you want to spend. Now, I did buy uh, the, what I bought, the radio is called the Motor 2A. They got different ones. They got like the Motor 4HD or something like that, then the Motor 2A, and then they got the Motor 1A, I think it is. It's, so I bought the middle one, and really the differences are the the 1A is just radio that's it you have am fm and then i think you have an auxiliary port to plug your phone into the 2a the one i bought has am fm auxiliary ports usb port and uh bluetooth the 4 the 4h it has everything that the 2a has plus xm radio and i don't listen to xm so i didn't see the point in spending extra money it was like a, it was like an extra 65 dollars for the uh h the four h and i don't even use xm so i didn't see this point in spending the money on it but uh the one i bought i'm happy with and it's exactly what i was looking for so if y'all uh have any questions comments or concerns leave them down in the comment box down below and i'll get back to you if you like the video give me a thumbs up i'd appreciate it if you're not subscribed consider subscribing we're growing more and more each day which i'm thrilled about that i'm happy about that i hope we keep on growing and i uh, thank all y'all for watching and commenting and subscribing. So I'll see you on the next one. Take care.